stored procedures was not something that they had heard of. Uh, they were using just dynamic SQL all over the code. So we saw again, you know, we probably got it down from 100,000 lines of code to tens of thousands of lines of code. Wasn't really helping our case. So what would be the next query if you were to run a regular expression search? On the lines of SQL injection. I'm sorry? Insert. We ran insert as well, and we were we, we were faced with a similar scenario. So the inserts and select, just select and insert didn't really get us too far. We said, let's take it a step further. Let's look for select star, because those normally are the biggest culprits, right? So we said, let's try and see if we can find anything with select star in there. Now, they're not supposed to have, you know, select star under legitimate reason. There should be no legitimate reason to have a select star kind of query in a in application code. I mean, you have to have a real good reason for that. Uh, so we said, okay, let's look at select star from. We got five hits in the code. And that was more manageable. One of them was a select star from, and obviously I changed the name of the table here, but select star from the table that stored the credit card numbers. Obviously, you know, we were really interested in that one. Said, here's where we found it. Let's look at the application code surrounding this statement. Here's the application code surrounding it. Does anyone want to tell me what this is? What language is it for starters? Anyone? It's actually ASP.NET out there. But uh, can anyone tell me what's going on here? All the code review experts. It's a back door. It's a back door. <laughs> it's a back door. And he's right. It, it's a backdoor. What's going on here? And can you tell me a little more about the backdoor? Because I, I want to make sure that you just did not look at the word "let me in" and say it was a backdoor. <laughs> so pretty much it. Let me in, and all we got the if statement. Right. And there's only one command, and there's no reason to have that particular command by itself. Right. So all the return the result. So that's how we figure that out. Exactly. So what he said was, you know, obviously the let me in was the big clue, but also the fact that you're just running a select star query uh, and not doing much with it ex except for potentially displaying it back in the lines to follow, it seems suspicious. But we, what we also see there is what they're doing is they're pulling out the fifth parameter from the URL, and if the fifth parameter is set to let me in. Then and only then does this particular SQL query execute and the, and the potential output of that, the results happen. Now, we, we spoke with the application developers and they were totally stumped because that particular page had a maximum of four queries that it was supposed to accept. What was the fifth query about? So it definitely seemed like a sort of a backdoor put in by someone and said, well, once I'm done developing this code, I still have that fifth parameter that I can inject and, and extort for several hundreds of thousands of dollars. So this was definitely a backdoor. Was it an insider job? How did they get access to the code base? It could well have been someone from the outside who got access to the code base. Well, what we saw was that we reviewed the code archives and found that the code that the, contained this particular, these particular statements for the first time was checked in by a developer whose firm was contracted to develop this code. It was based out of a country in Asia, not Malaysia, <laughs> not India. Uh, but it was basically a third party who had been contracted and the developer from there had checked in this code. Now once we knew that, we said, well, if these guys had to get a hold of the current list of credit card numbers, they obviously accessed the application, providing it this fifth parameter. Now let's go back to the web server logs and let's use Microsoft Log Parser and look for that fifth parameter. And guess what? We found the fifth parameter. The IP address associated with those requests also came back from Asia. Who is quick? Who is lookup? Showed us it was the same country as from where the developer was or the developer's firm was. So now there was there was uh, you know, the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle were kind of coming together. Someone from some country put something in there and then accessed this, the application, and all of a sudden you receive these threats. Um, we were fortunate enough because the development company was notified. They were obviously not involved. It was just a, a rogue employee there. And also, you know, like I said, law enforcement was working with, uh, with the legal counsel. They contacted law enforcement in the country in Asia. And uh, fortunately, we saw cooperation there. And we were actually able to stall this cyber extortion case. 
So within 72 hours, we were able to prevent the CEO from succumbing and saying, here is the check for $250,000. Any questions? I wish. <laughs> I wish. Yes. It had to be done via a bank transfer, actually, and it was to some random uh, country. I don't even remember where, but it was a bank transfer out of the U.S. Uh, and definitely to, one, to a country that would not cooperate in case of uh, legal issues with the United States. I'll leave it at that. Any other questions? No, all crystal clear? Yes. I, I, yeah, it's a good question. What, what would our next step have been had the back door not been so obvious? Uh, again, given the timeline that we were playing with, you know, we would obviously rely on an on, on in-house legal counsel to try and uh, negotiate a longer time frame for us to look at things. But uh, at, at that point, mind you, when you're working on 72 hours of no sleep and no food, uh, your brains don't work too much. You're just focused on, uh, uh, you know, we were so focused on I could see log files even when I was walking out of there. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I really don't know what my next step would have been, actually. I was just glad to be over with it. Any other questions? Well, then I can put up my fancy questions. Yeah. Does that retail company still use third-party developers? Yes, they do. As a matter of fact, they do. And what's interesting now, though, is that there's, uh, there's definite SLAs in place between that, between that organization and the third parties, which talk about, you know, things related to security that should have been there for, for starters. And had they had this particular SLA in place, they could have probably sued this particular development company, which they were not able to do. Because the service level agreements had nothing to talk about security. It was just performance of the application, develop the application in this given period of time. Just like everyone who's a developer here would know. Uh, that's all you have to deal with. It's performance and speed and nothing to do with security. Any other questions? Well, if not, then uh, Salam and Tinga.